and welcome to episode 19 of the Summer Knits podcast, a podcast primarily about knitting and fiber. Um, I'm based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I live here with my two kids and my husband and our menagerie of dogs and chickens. And I just thank you for joining me today. Um, we are trying a less than uh, exciting backdrop today, but perhaps better lighting than I've had the last couple of episodes. My ring light tends to die not long into filming, so um, I'm going to try sitting opposite one of our brighter windows and see if I get some better light that way. So um, let's dive right into finished objects. I don't have very many, but it hasn't been that long since I filmed. I think it's maybe been a couple weeks. Um, last week was spring break for my kids, so I did get a bit of knitting done, but first I want to talk about the rainy day sweater. Um, so I made this rainy day sweater out of hand dyed yarn from, um, uh, Pancake and Lulu. It is two strands held together. Let me show them individually. Um, I didn't plan very well for this because they're on the bottom of the bag, but it is a merino silk. And the colorway on both yarns is called Periwinkle in Time. But this is the merino silk, and you can see it's very shiny, and it picked up more of the blue in the periwinkle. Um, it's showing pretty true to color. And this is the Surrey alpaca that I held with it. Um, also in the same colorway, but you can see it picked up more of the red. So held together, they made this fabric. But separately, that is how they look. Um, they were delightful to work with. The merino silk is so soft and shiny. And then the Surrey alpaca, of course, is super soft and very drapey. Um, so together, I got a fabulous fabric. The pattern calls for two strands of mohair and a strand of fingering weight. And I prefer Surrey alpaca over mohair, and it does um, knit up a bit heavier than mohair. A lot of people say they're interchangeable, but it is a bit thicker, generally. Um, less of a big fuzzy halo. I mean, there's still a halo and it is still fuzzy, but it's not quite as cloud-like as Kid Silk Mohair. Um, but you get this soft, beautiful drape and it's less prickly for most people against their skin. So I went ahead just with a single strand of the Surrey Alpaca and the Merino Silk. Um, and it's, it's fabulous. It is the softest sweater, I think, that I have made. Um, the pattern was very clear and very easy to follow, but unfortunately I learned after buying it that it is not as size inclusive as I would have hoped. Um, and I have mentioned that a couple of times, and I'm, I have mentioned it where the designer is able to see that, um, and I hope that that she will take some action um, and increase her size range. But um, if not, then obviously I won't purchase any more patterns um, from her. I'll put her name down here at the bottom. But um, I, do, I do prefer to support designers who design for a wide range of bodies because everybody is different. And um, I prefer to support people who who do size inclusive designing. Do you need to join us today, Riley? Oh, all right. Here. If you haven't been here before, this is Riley. He's a 14 year old pug chihuahua and he is very needy. So he will um, apparently be joining us today. But anyway, I, I do love the fit and drape of this sweater. Um, I did make the size small because I didn't want it quite as oversized as the pattern called for, but also I was a little bit loose on my gauge. I'm a very loose knitter, so um, I was okay with that. I didn't want to go down another needle size. I liked the fabric I was getting, so I went ahead and made the size small. Um, and for reference, I currently, uh, I had to remeasure recently, have a 38 inch bust. Um, previously it was like 36 and a half, and that is how I generally um, chose my pattern sizes, but I had to remeasure for a test knit recently, and I was like, oops, 
Um, so I have a 38 inch bust and you can see that there's plenty of room and plenty of drape in the sweater. I'll show the bottom of it. There is a repeat of one of the lace charts at the bottom before you get to the ribbing. It is a balloon sleeve, not a huge balloon sleeve, a very gentle balloon sleeve and a short ribbed cuff that does hold it in place pretty well. It does not fall down over my hands, so it doesn't aggravate me when I am trying to do things or um, work or type or anything like that. You're gonna have to lay down if you would like to stay here. I know. Um, so anyway, I, I do love the sweater. I love the finished product. Um, it's the rainy day sweater, and I will link it below, um, but it is, it is up to you um, whether you choose to support designers that um, do not have a size range that fits the majority of people. Um, because really, the there are so many different body types out there. And um, it's, it's just really sad that, that some designs only come um, in such a limited range. I did want to show you also, if you do end up doing the pattern, um, I purchased three skeins of the fingering weight, which is 400 yards, and four skeins of the Surrey alpaca, and I barely needed the third skein of fingering weight to finish one sleeve, and I never even caked up the fourth Surrey alpaca, and you can see how much I have left of the third. So I have quite a bit of yardage left, um, and I have not yet decided what to do with these. I might throw them in the bag with my odds and ends that I want to use for a sea glass sweater, because I do think they'd go beautifully with the pinks and blues and purples and things that I've already put in that bag. So might do that. Um, my next finished object is really just a half finished object, and it continues the purple kick. Um, it's one you've seen before because I started it way back in September and just didn't put much time into it after the weekend that I started it. But I have finished um, one of my shorty vanilla socks. It's not a super shorty where you just do a few rounds and then the heel, um, but it is a relatively short sock. It is a size small and I used the um, So Basic sock pattern by Summer Lee. And I just, um, I love the yarn. It's such a fun yarn. This is called, um, oh, I said it last time and now I've forgotten. It's from Crystal Skies Hand Dyed and it was part of a Harry Potter um, monthly set that she did seven months. Each one was from a different book and I got it back at the very beginning of 2020. Um, before the world even shut down from COVID, uh, when I was recovering from hip surgery, I gave myself a little bit of retail therapy. And this is, oh, it's the Honey Dukes colorway. And then I had some leftover purple from the Violet Valentine from a different project that I had done. So I just did the contrast heels, toes, and cuffs with that and the beautiful variegated yarn all pretty in the middle. Um, so I haven't cast on the second sock yet. I actually just, Kitchenered the toe last night and wove in all the ends. So this isn't even really blocked. I just threw it on a sock blocker, but I will soak it and block it um, because I am still working on finding my ideal stitch count for a vanilla sock so that I can make socks on the go without constantly checking a pattern. Um, I do love patterned socks and textured socks, but I really want to get down my personal perfect numbers for a vanilla sock pattern. So I did use um, 2.25 millimeter needles and it was nine inch circulars, which I know I knit a bit tighter on nine inch circulars just because of the way I hold them. Um, so, and then the, the toe, I actually did um, on double pointed needles. I think I loosen up a lot on Magic Loop um, and I think that's been my problem on the DRK Everyday Socks for my husband. So I actually want to try doing a pair of DRK Everyday Socks on 9-inch circulars instead of Magic Loop because I think that I tighten up quite a bit. But I'm also going to go down to a size 0 for those because I know my ribbing is loose. But anyway, this is my first sock of that set and hopefully I will 
do the second one and actually have a pair of vanilla socks for myself. Um, I meant to grab my mother for my birthday got me um, cedar boxes for my socks and so I have all my handmade socks folded all pretty in a little cedar box and then I have a second one that doesn't have anything in it yet and I'd like to fill up that second one. Um, only about half of the handmade socks in my first box were actually knit by me. Um, a couple of them came from friends from before I even had my daughter who's my oldest um, I was in a knitting group locally and there was a lady who loved to knit socks, but she just didn't really wear them. Um, so I was gifted a pair of her socks and then another friend gifted me a beautiful set of hand knit socks um, for a birthday. And so I just, I have a variety of hand knit socks, but I have not made all of them. Um, and I, I just, I love hand knit socks. I've just been so motivated by sweaters recently that it's been hard for me to put them down long enough to work on socks. But um, moving into works in progress, I spent all of last week, I took so many different knitting projects with me on our spring break trip. Um, we went to my brother's house in Colorado and we went skiing and snowshoeing and to a hot springs and um, snow tubing, just all the all the things, but I took a whole variety of projects with me in my knitting bag and I spent the entire week only working on one thing. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it, but I spent the whole week on the body of my shifty sweater because I was just so into watching it grow. Um, and I did use some progress keepers to, to show me where I got to. So this is the back of the shifty. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry of Drea Renee Knits, and this is also going to be entered in the DRK March to May Knit Along, which I've done every year since its inception, and so I couldn't skip it this year. Um, but this might be the most complicated of the undertakings I've done for the Knit Along. The first year I did the Weekender sweater, and last year I did a striped sweater. Um, this one, luckily, won't have nearly as many ends to weave in as that striped sweater. Oh my gosh, that took me forever to weave in all those ends. But um, I started when we got in the car um, up here where the froggy is. as the cutest little froggy from um, Southern Skeins. Oh, he's backwards. Come here, froggy. Cute little froggy. And um, when we got out of the car after returning home I was down here where the little birdie is and you can see that since we got home I have not had a lot of time I spent last night on the sock but a couple of nights I've just fallen into bed I haven't had the time to knit at all but um, let's turn it to the front this is my shifty sweater and um, it's just so beautiful I love it and I don't know how well you can see the colors but I am using four contrast colors instead of three. And I know it's, it's a bit drastic of a change, but the first one up here with the yellow in it is um, Castle. And then I actually get confused as to which is which because of course I took the labels off and didn't keep them together. My other contrast colors are um, The Saddest Place, um, Bruised Ego, and absolute zero. So I transition from dropping things, the castle, not quite all the way through the yoke. You start with your second contrast color. Um, and that was this one. So you can see there's some bits of brighter turquoise going on, um, coming down. And then the third contrast color was this one that's more purples. And now I'm on the fourth contrast color, which, um, 
is slightly more red purples, but it does have those more gray purples down in it. Um, so we'll see those appear again on the sleeves, and I'm not too fussed if the sleeves match, so I'm not going to worry about like cutting out sections of the yarn and stuff like some people do to make their sleeves match. It doesn't matter. I will, I will change contrast colors at the same place each time, but I am not going to make the color shift. Sorry, my nose itches probably getting fiber in it. Um, I'm not going to make the color changes match exactly on the sleeves. I think that the beauty of the shifty sweater is all the color movement in it. And I just, I really love seeing the changes. Um, I feel like this bright turquoise stripe is almost like a underbust belt at this point, but I know from blocking my swatch that it's going to loosen up a bit as it's blocked. It is pretty close to a zero ease at my full bust. I'm doing size two. I didn't quite get gauge, um, so I didn't want to go with a size three because it was going to end up too big. So I went with size two and I tried it on recently and I love the way it is fitting. In her notes, Andrea Mowry tells you, if you're between sizes, try going down in this sweater. The design intent looks excellent with zero um, ease, anywhere from negative two inches to a positive two inches, but she recommended as close to zero ease um, as you were willing to go. And I really, it's, it's beautiful and I'm, making an effort to only add one set of blips, which is what she calls the, the pattern repeat, um, at the bottom and not make it too long because I do want it to go over dresses and high-waisted jeans and stuff. And I have um, just not been comfortable making cropped things recently because I haven't liked the way I've looked in my clothes. Um, I had hip surgery two years ago. I know I've mentioned that on here before and there's a like 20 pound and multiple inch difference between what I weighed um, when I had hip surgery and now and it's been an adjustment for me but I think I have found clothes that are comfortable and um, I'm getting used to dressing my body the way it is now. Um, and I'm not saying that I'm not going to continue to exercise and eat healthy and all those things, but I've, I've gotten more used to what feels good on me now. And so I want to knit for the body I have now and not knit for some ideal body that I may or may not get to this year, next year, 10 years. It, it is better to knit for the body I have right now. And so that is what I'm doing and because of that I've been extending a lot of my sweaters and things just because I wasn't comfortable with my stomach but I have some dresses that I think that this will look amazing over I've gotten some nice new high-waisted jeans that I think that this will look really nice with so I'm very excited about the shifty sweater um, in case I didn't mention it because I don't think I did um, I am using gusto as my main color all the way through it is 100% superwash merino. It says it's a DK weight. It feels so much more like a fingering weight. Um, it has 330 yards per 100 grams. Um, I'd call it a sport weight at best. And it recommends a US 5 to 6 needle or a 3.75 to 4 millimeter. Um, it is called Loops Gray Day. And it's just this um, almost creamy gray, and I think that it makes the contrast colors pop really nicely. Um, I was a little worried about the yellow in the beginning, that it wouldn't stand out, but I really think it does. I really think it stands out nicely, and I am very much looking forward to finishing this. I have one repeat of the bigger blips left and one repeat of smaller blips and then the bottom ribbing and then time for sleeves and I'm hoping these sleeves go quicker than a regular stockinette sleeve just because I'll be so interested in watching the color changes which I think help me move so quickly through the body 
that hopefully Sleeve Island won't really be a thing. My main concern right now is finding my US one and a half needle that is longer because I did the collar on a 15 inch and obviously I can't put all these body stitches on, um, or I guess a 16 inch needle, I don't know. Anyway, I can't put all these body stitches on that short needle so I need to find my longer one that I usually use for Magic Loop that is in a US one and a half. So as soon as I can locate that, finish those repeats of the pattern and get that bottom ribbing on, I can move on to the sleeves and I'm very excited. Um, that was, like I said, the only thing I worked on the whole week. Um, and I didn't spend my whole week focusing on knitting. I tried to spend my whole week focusing on our outdoor activities and the kids. but mornings, evenings, all of our car ride time. Um, that is what I worked on. So nothing else to show on the works in progress front. Um, I do have a couple of acquisitions. If you're not into that, um, thank you so much for joining me, but I'll see you next time. Um, so the first thing is I got my knitting for olive shipment that I purchased when they were donating all of their proceeds to aid organizations in the Ukraine um, the night after I filmed last time. So I ordered, um, I tried to order for very specific things and not just place a big generic order because I'm trying to cut down on just random yarn buying. I do still have my subscriptions for my surprise box from Southern Skeins, but that is my only like random yarn purchase each month. So I think I got five balls of the Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair. It's navy, but it's so dark I'm not sure if you can tell. Um, I got it actually, I might have should have gotten one step lighter, but I couldn't tell if I liked that one online. And I think the navy will still hold nicely with my Wooly Knit Cone of Corvette Blue. Um, it is beautiful and has a lovely sheen and is so soft. So I got five skeins of that because that should be a sweater quantity or more for me. Um, but I didn't want to be limited in my pattern choices by not having enough. So five skeins of Knitting for Olive Silk Mohair in navy. And then as part of my summer knitting, which I'm starting to plan my warm weather make nine and I can't wait to film that episode. Um, I gotta get organized first because I'm mostly going to be knitting from stash. This is the exception, this is the new. Um, but I have planned my warm weather make nine around yarns I already have um, and for the most part, patterns I already have or had already queued up. Um, so I'm just arranging yarns with patterns and getting situated on what I want to do. Um, I do want to add a cardigan to my summertime make nine, um, preferably a fingering or sport weight cardigan. If anyone has any recommendations, I am absolutely open to them. My office is still very cold in the summer, but I would still like something lightweight and pretty. So if you have a cardigan recommendation for spring summer knitting, please feel free to drop that in the comments. Uh, my other purchase from Knitting for Olive was this coral and it is the cotton merino. And I was looking on Ravelry the other day and I think that I've already picked out a pattern and I can't remember the name of it, but I just, it's so soft and so beautiful, and I can't wait to knit this up. You're, feel free to drop in the comments what you would do with five skeins of the cotton merino. It is a fingering weight, I think. Um, so it's 250 meters per 50 grams. So it'd be like a light fingering weight because it would be... 500 meters um, per 100 grams. So quite a lot of yardage here. Any ideas are welcome. Ooh. Fibers in my nose, fibers in my nose. Sorry. 
Um, my only other acquisition is this skein of Dylan DK Bear Yarn because I talked about the test knit for the Marvelous Mrs. Maker that I was going to be participating in last time. And I had contacted Marianne from the Violet Valentine. Um, you can see her logo there. She's on Etsy and she's a hand dyer and the yarn that I had selected was hers. And so I wanted a cream just to match it. So she very kindly got this in the mail to me very quickly. Um, and then the test knit was postponed due to some rewriting of the pattern and things totally understandable. I would rather the designer be fully comfortable with their pattern before starting the test knit than rush into anything that they didn't feel ready for. So 100% support Brit for postponing the test knit, but I do have this skein of bear to go with the pink that I showed last time for that test knit. I am leaving that pattern on my warm weather make nine um, because I'm hopeful that Brit is ready to test knit it sometime this spring and that I can just proceed with that. So I will be ready when she is ready. And because Marianne is wonderful, she always sends goodies with her yarn. She sent some maple cider stash tea, a high chew, a pretty little pink stitch marker and some light bulb stitch markers. So thank you to Marianne for such quickness and getting that out to me. And I'm sorry, I won't be able to use it yet, but I will eventually because it's going to be a gorgeous top once we get around to doing it. So um, that's really all I have for today. I know that this was a really quick episode. I will um, throw some snowy pictures in at the end and then I keep taking footage in yarn stores and forgetting to add it so I will try and remember to add um, some yarn shot footage and label it from where it was because some of it relates to past episodes and things but thank you for joining me um, I hope that you are enjoying some creative time and um, that the weather wherever you are is nice. I know that there is a lot going on in the world and it can feel um, fairly frivolous to film and or watch podcasts, but I just hope that filming or watching or whatever, you know, activity it is you're doing that you sometimes feel maybe guilty for is, is giving you a little bit of a mental break um, if possible and just a little bit of peace. And I, did, I just don't have the words for what's going on um, right now around the world. But let's continue to support as much as we can the Ukraine and um, keep funding aid organizations. And I know everybody just has to do the best they can in their daily lives. So... Um, I don't know. I don't have any more words for it. My dog is snoring next to me. He's very good at that. Um, anyway, thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. Have a wonderful week or two. Hopefully I am back on a regular filming schedule of every couple of weeks. I know that the summertime was a bit waffly, and probably that will happen again this summer just with kids home and school being out and this, that, and the other. Um, but I think it's been good to get back into a regular routine and to try and keep the episodes maybe a little more brief um, so that they can be consumed in bite-sized portions. Anyway, I'm starting to babble, so have a wonderful week, and I will see you next time.